Hey everybody, welcome back to the Center of All Grace podcast, where we take the weekly sermon and go into a deeper dive to help build the community and build the bridge to you, our church family. On my left, the good Reverend David Holmes. Dave, how was your week? It was fantastic, man. We had uh, spring break this week, so loving it. What was the highlight of your week? Weekly recap, what you got for us? Well, uh, it's it's a twofer. The first was Beth took the boys to Indianapolis for a few days to mm. see the grandparents. Love that. And I got to stay home and work. It was great. <laughs> and you worked hard. <laughs> I did. I, I put some extra hours in. Yeah. So it was great. But then on the flip side, they came back home and then I took off Thursday and Friday and it was great. So we got to spend some time together. Love that. Yep. Pastor Dusty, best part of your week, weekly recap, what do you got for us? Yeah, weekly recap, we took a little family trip down to Nashville. Which or, turned into an adventure. Which you turned talked into about adventure. that from the platform. Give us the expanded version. I did. Okay, the expanded version was uh, we took my son, my seven-year-old son, Declan, to uh, one of his favorite bands, which is this like cool little jazz fusion group from Holland. So they'd only tour in the United States once every 10 years. Y- your but, seven-year-old loves that band too, right. don't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, never. No. Go ahead, keep listen. going. So we get we do do his first concert That's on brand for the Sturk family, it, which it I is, appreciate. Yeah. It is, but on the way back from the concert, it was like it was almost midnight. And we're pulling into a Seven Eleven because Nicole's like, I really just want something cold. Like, let's just go get some ice cream. And we're downtown Nashville. We don't know where anything is. So like, all right, pull in. Well, me like a dum dum did not see the little jagged edge of the curb oh. that I completely hit at about full speed and not just popped the tire. I mean, I exploded the tire. Ah. Yeah. Sidewall, boom. I mean, it was gone. I was right on the rim and oh, it's like, man. okay, pull up to the gas station, change the tire at midnight. And it's like, well, we need to drive back home to Ohio tomorrow. So I'm like, all right, I got a plan. I'm going to get the tire discounters at like 7.50 in the morning, make mm-hmm. sure I'm the first person standing outside when it opens. Yeah. And that all worked out great. We were first. We get in there. I'm like, this is going to be like at least a $1,000 mistake because it's an all-wheel drive car. And it was even more. And we're not going to talk about that. But five and a half hours is the length of time it took them to put tires on that car. I could have put tires on your car faster than I that. I could have put tires on my car faster than that. Did you ask why? Um, I, I have my suspicions, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go into it on the podcast and make anybody feel bad if they They're happen listening. to run across the Center of Grace podcast someday. But let's just say customer service is always something I feel like I could do better than the person who's serving me, which mm. probably sells more about my character than it does about theirs. Mm. <laughs> mm. But I'm just going through my head the scenarios. What would I do different in this moment? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Wow. Uh, let's see. Big week for the Milton Burger household, actually. Right? Like, uh, so... My son Connor's a senior, and we found out this week that he was accepted into the Naval Academy. Congrats. So, yeah, yeah, thanks. No thanks. small feat, Connor. No small feat at all. Yeah, no. Connor's so proud of Connor and his accomplishments, and proud of Karen and I that we made it. <laughs> Did it. And now you don't have to pay for college. We do. As a matter of fact, I was just looking. Uh, mi- plebes in the Naval Academy, they get uh, $1,200 a month while they're in school. What? Yeah. Now, wow. the, in typical government fashion, um, the first uh, $800 of that is already allocated to other expenses. <laughs> so, so they deposit in his account and then they take it out. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> but uh, obviously super excited for him. And then uh, and then he got to celebrate by going to prom. So it was just a good family, like, um, you know, just a lot of emotion, a lot of joy and just a tremendous amount of pride. So, yeah, big. That's great. Big week for him. Uh, all right. Well, we got back into the life and the gospel according to Jesus by looking at the gospel of Luke. So we had taken that time off for Easter. So if you guys remember the last message before Easter was all about loving your enemy, Pastor Dave gave a a credible message on what that means. And then this week we took Luke six verses 37 through 49, finally closing out chapter six. Yep. And Which, the sermon. It, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and the sermon. Yeah, yeah, the sermon on the plane, if you remember that. We talked a little bit about that yep. on Sunday, is that this idea that Jesus has kind of been talking to his disciples. It's a message written for his disciples or a message given to the disciples. So, uh, Dave, would you take it away with a reading there? Absolutely. So this is John 6, starting in verse 37. Luke, Luke 6. Did I say John? You did. It was a test, and you passed. Thank you. Well done. Thank They're basically you. the same guy. It's fine. Basically. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know why I always go to John. I always just refer to John. Hmm. Anyways, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. 
A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable, Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug deep down and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the... Sorry, struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you guys in just a second, I'm going to kind of explain how, when I was approaching the text, how I broke it up for the podcast family. But um, while I'm doing that, I want you guys to find the most convicting verse for you because I've spent a lot of time in this text studying for, obviously, for preaching. So I know what my answer is already. So I'll come back to you guys in just a second. Now, if you're listening to this and you've never preached a sermon before, um, basically, one of the things that you kind of have to do is decide how you're going to tackle the text. And when um, one of your coworkers, maybe his name is Pastor Dave, assigns you 11 verses of the most densely uh, populated texts in that Jesus preaches, yep. you're all, it's, it's a real challenge. And so, uh, what I decided to do Sunday, if you were there, you'll notice that we did this kind of a, a survey and a survey, think about it kind of like a drone flying over a golf course in my head. That's what it looks like is that you're, you're taking all the text as much as possible and you're just kind of hit it all. You're not going to hit it in super detail. You're going to try to pull out some macro biblical truths. And so that's kind of how I approach the text. But I am curious, as you guys both read it, you both studied it, you've read it before, which verse is most convicting to you? Pastor Dusty, we'll start with you. All right. I'm going immediately to 46, which is, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? That was mine too. I know, but it was also (laughs) mine. It's not just because I heard the sermon on it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like, so it, it gets us past the whole, you know, calling out judgment and mm-hmm. others and the hypocrisy there, because, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, I think you threw out there on Facebook, even before the sermon, part of the problems of preaching is that most time we're preaching to ourselves, right? When we're looking for how do we spiritually form ourselves? Like, how do I apply this to my life before I'm thinking who around me needs to apply this to their life? Cause that's where our human side sure, goes, right? Sure. Oh, I know who this fits the description of, Oh, right. you know, I've tapped my wife mm-hmm. on the shoulder. Like, you know who this is. Mm-hmm. And the reality is this forces us to look into a mirror. It's like, now it's probably me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that was also mine. Uh, I think I mentioned it in the sermon and uh, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say. And I, I, I definitely, um, I wrestle in that tension of, I, I don't want to strive to be, you know, I, I don't want to like strive, like there's some sort of like ultimate perfection, mm-hmm. but what I do want is obedience. Like I want to be obedient to the Lord. And so when I know the Lord's commands and I don't do them, when Jesus calls them out like this in the text, I'm like, oh, like so convicting, so convicting. Yeah. And don't you feel like you'd be better off? Like if, if we could spend our entire lives just working on ourselves and how we respond to mm-hmm. God without ever preaching With, a yes. word towards somebody else. Yeah. Right, and there's a lifetime of that, and we still aren't very good at it most of the time. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Reverend, this is a tough, tough question. There's Thanks. so many hard. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is just so rich. It's it a rich is. text. I'm glad I didn't have to preach eleven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <That's a> jerk. <laughs> Go, go a cough. Oh Sorry. my goodness! Uh, you know, I think that whole thirty-seven through what is it, forty-two? Man, that is that's hard. The idea of judging—if we can put critiquing in there, being critical mm. and looking at other people's flaws—that's certainly uh, the challenge for me, for sure. 
you know, all of this is kind of, um, I mentioned in the sermon, this idea about integrity and self-examination. I'm curious from both of you guys, how do you use scripture like this to do a self-examination as a, as one of your kind of disciplines? Cause I, I know you both to be, uh, guys who are really self, uh, critical. I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just like you guys are all, you know, all three of us really do the hard work. Um, how do you use biblical text to be uh, self-examining on like a random Tuesday in July? Mm, that's mm, a hard question. That is, that's... I mean, I like, because I'm a logical person, right? First and foremost, I'm not a feeler. That's where we're a little different, mm-hmm. right? You're kind of yep. a feeler first. I'm, and I think Dave, you're the similar as me, right? We're yep. head first. Yep. That like just thinking about it and like I I find that when I think about something first, if I think about it long enough, then it will start to ruminate down into my heart. Mm -hmm. So it's like I need to chew on it for a little bit. So I could take a scripture like that and, you know, it's a scripture that's very convicting. But like the more I think about it, the more I can actually apply that to my heart. And it it just takes time to simmer. (laughs) It takes a lot of time to simmer. Um, And I don't have a better answer than that other than, man, the longer I think about something, the more I can actually give time to apply it to my life. Say, am I doing this? And where are the areas? Because. I'm at the point in my spiritual journey right now where I know there's an area that I struggle with nearly anything I read in scripture. Mm -hmm. It's just how much am I aware of it and to what degree does that come out towards others? Yeah. So like, okay, God, I I don't think I am this, but show me the areas that I'm hidden from my own heart where I still practice this and I might not even be aware of it. And usually God has something for me. I would say always God has something for me, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It's, it's allowing that time to meditate and hearing the echoes that you like I'll read something and then suddenly like my wife is telling me something very similar to me and I'm like, oh yeah, God is really <laughs> trying to tell me this is an issue. And uh, yeah, so it's just ruminating, ruminating, ruminating on it. And eventually it, it gets worked down to the heart, but it, it takes, takes some time. It's so funny because I'm a little bit different where it's like I immediately feel convicted, mm. but I can emotionally manipulate myself out of the conviction. Mm. <laughs> and so for me, I have to... Um, Sociopath. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Um, ask my wife. She'll tell you. Uh, one of the things that I have to do is I have to create an annual practice of evaluation when it comes to the areas um, that, that are convicting to me. So like... I say that I want to be a faithful person, but because I'm emotionally driven and I'm a fairly good like talker, even when I'm talking to myself, I can talk myself out of whether or not I am or I, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Right. So for me, and you know, we're going to work on this a little bit at the men's retreat is this idea about a rule of life, mm-hmm. but having spaces and practices to evaluate. Right. So this text is important but it's really important through the lens of my own self-evaluation, which then for me, I need to quantify Mm -hmm. because I'm not naturally bent towards quantifying something as an outcome. Right. Does that make sense? That does make sense. (laughs) I'm I'm just agreeing with you over here. That sounds good. (laughs) Yeah. Which is funny because I think when we, like when we sit in like, you know, vision casting meetings and fun parts, that's that's the part I always know will come out of you versus what will come out of me is like, I want to quantify things and I want a system and I want a thing. And it's like, I know that you're going to push for that organic. Why can't it be a little bit more organic? Why can't we just do it organic? Why can't it just happen? That's your word. That's the word, man. That's the word. I just want it to be organic. Every time you say the word organic, I say the word system and it (laughs) just goes back and forth. And I'm in the middle. It's great. <laughs> it's, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's <laughs> it works great. out great. It's great. <laughs> so um, I, I'm curious from both of you guys, if there was, uh, so obviously the word that I chose to kind of um, summarize this text is I, I think that this text is really about integrity, right? And, and I use the definition integrity and kind of whole and undivided. When you think about how you would preach the sermon, is there a word or two that you would use to kind of summarize it? Or as you look at it, what are the things that you would have, uh, we'll start with you, Dave, and then go over to you, Dusty, kind of what are some of the areas that you would want to have hit uh, in the text? Yeah, I like I like the word integrity a lot. I got it from you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sh- so for those of you who don't know, here's a little uh, little behind the scenes, little insider baseball. Is we have a, a sheet mm-hmm. um, that has all of the sermons and who's going to preach them, kind of uh, laid out to a certain point, and Dave fills those in, and then he kind of gives a thought about what he thinks the text is going to say, and he was like, uh, you know, wrote. Luke six thirty seven through forty nine integrity. I was like, all right, well, I guess we'll start there, but yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I like integrity in this in the definition in the sense of the closer you get to it, the more 
uh, the better it looks, the more holistic, you know, the mm. idea is like, it's like a ship integrity, like there's no cracks, there's nothing, the closer you get to it, the more it, it, uh, it just is real to you. So, uh, I would say, um, you know, there's so many, I have like questions like right now of like, of the text, like the idea of forgiveness, forgive and you will be forgiven. That's hinting at a little bit of what Jesus says about in the, in his prayer, like forgive us our debts as you know yeah. as we forgive. And it almost seems like forgiveness is tied. God's forgiveness to us is tied to our forgiveness of others. So certainly, when I was doing some research, some of the theologians suggested that this text Jesus is saying just that, like, yeah. hey, you're going to be judged, however you judge others, uh, according to the text. Yeah. That's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shoot! Whoa, whoa, whoa. That should give all at least cause us to pause. Whether we're saying that's true or not, we're just that should give us a, just a, a pause in how we um, go about judging and and you know judging, condemning. Um, and again, I would probably look. I haven't you know haven't studied this passage, uh, but judge and condemn two different words. But to me, I've always been taught that judging is condemning. Like that's the difference of like saying. Uh, I'm condemning you. I'm not giving you another chance idea, but what is judging versus condemning? What's the difference? I would have probably played around with that a little bit, see where that goes. I don't know. That's just the first two verses. I, you know, I, I would be, right. I, I would mean, be you swimming could, honestly, in this. You could probably spend six months on this. Sure. Uh, dust thoughts. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I pull out of this whole passage in general is you, you were using the term, you know, live in the integrated life, right? What does it mean to, to mm-hmm. live our lives in an integrated holistic way? Mm. And I just go to the opposite of that, which is, you know, what's the opposite of integrated? It's compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. And I'm a really good compartmentalization person. Like I can compartmentalize the he- like the way that you can emotionally manipulate and talk yourself into stuff. I can compartmentalize my the way out of any situation. Yeah. Like I will put this in this box. This can fit in this box. Yep. And the danger with compartmentalization, which goes so far against the direction of the integrated life, is we do what we mostly do in the Western church to some degree, which is we put our faith in a box and we don't let that bleed out into how we actually live our lives. So one of the pieces that obviously we're big on here is, you know, this this process of disciple making and being a disciple and what's it look like to apprentice under Jesus. And what that requires of us is not just doing something religious and keeping that in a box. And, you know, my wife and I, we joke around, we use the term sprinkling a little bit of Jesus into our day-to-day life, but our life isn't really going to change. We're just adding Jesus into it. No, if, if we're going to follow Jesus and live that integrated life, we can't compartmentalize our faith to just certain aspects of our life. It has to co- bleed through in everything that we do yeah. in every interaction we have. And that doesn't mean that you're like, you know, you're out there evangelizing when you're at your job, when you're not allowed to, it just means if people look at your life, they should know that you live in a way that seems countercultural at this point, mm. right? That you've got a piece within yourself that maybe you, you know, use more deeply construct your life in a way that has meaning versus just kind of, you know, live in a very consumeristic mentality and then, making sure we come to church on Sunday, make sure I, I went to my life group. I, mm-hmm. I checked off all my religious boxes mm. and that's, that's where you were getting to with the sermon. I think yeah. of that integrated life. Yep, for sure. For sure. Well, one of the, um, so, you know, we always encourage you, our church family or any of our listeners, if you have questions about the text to kind of let us know. And someone actually came up and said, Hey, you know, uh, we've, I've got a question about the text hmm. and I gave an answer and I thought I'd be interested to hear your guys' answer. And I, I just, discla- you know, I gave the disclaimer as I, which I'm going to do now is that I didn't really research this particular question. So it was just kind of a hot take Sure. The, and the, and it revolves around Verse 38, right? It says, uh, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be used to measure you. And um, the person, uh, the church family member was like, hey, what does that mean? A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. I made a joke about it on Sunday morning because I spilled my coffee on myself Mm -hmm. and had to change hoodies yes yes and uh but i'm curious uh what hot take on that yeah uh <laughs> I'm, I'm curious on what your answer was first and i'll see if i agree or not I, <laughs> that's hurtful hurtful um i actually um reference the thought process in the jewish culture of the idea of the blessing cup Right. Mm. And so given it will be given to you for me is this idea about a blessing. So a mm. good measure, again, going with that idea about blessing, br- pressed down, shaken together and running over. It really is to me was reminiscent of Psalm 23 
you know, he anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over, right? And this idea that, you know, in the Jewish culture, when your cup is full and running over, you're blessed in a certain kind of way. And so what I felt like Jesus was saying there is kind of a, a nod to that Jewish cultural um, cup idea. Mm. Yeah, my first hot take, and I, again, I haven't... Yeah, no, I, it's a hot take. Is God, God gives us what we want. At the end of the day, this is, God says, okay, this is what you want, I'll give it to you. If this is how you want to, you know, and so if it's me, he'll give more of himself. If it's not God, uh, he will not give himself. And the ultimate, you know, is hell, where there is no presence mm-hmm. of God. And so... Uh, I can see this being like Jesus. This is what you like. This is how you want to live. This is how you want to treat people. Fine. This is this is how it's going to go for you. This is how I'm going to give it. Give you this system of judging and condemning and giving and all that. It's just this is, and it's not going to work out because our hearts are evil and wicked and we don't do it right. And but I think he just oftentimes just gives us what we want. As a, as a lesson teaching us like yeah i mean i agree what with that. you want is wrong <laughs> yeah it's it's like you know sometimes god honors the things that we want and we do that to our own discredit like you mm. want to create a system where you're judging everybody okay you're gonna you know you you're gonna yep. live by the sword and die by the sword yeah yeah, that's yep. good. yeah. Uh, and you know that's like ultimately when we think about what hell is without going too far down that path you know what is it at its core it's it's you know the absence of god mm-hmm. right and if you want to live your life without any presence of god within it like Maybe that's a gracious act at the end of the day. It's like, all right, you know, you want to remove yourself from me? I, I'm, I'm gone, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we live by the sword, we die by the sword. That's what I'm going to take with that. Good. Love it. Uh, okay. Well, let's transition to our last section of the day, our PRs, pastoral recommendations. We always like to end the podcast with something to take you a little bit deeper, maybe in your own spiritual formation. I will start, and I'm going to suggest to you guys... Uh, I mentioned this at the beginning of the sermon is this idea about the spiritual practice of reading scripture. And so for me, uh, if I could give you one thing, it would be, you know, find a, a rhythm to read scripture on a regular basis, at least four times a week. And uh, I particularly love the Version Bible app. This is me just kind of giving it uh, a shameless plug for that. The Version Bible app is an incredible, incredible tool in reading scripture and so if you're not using it, I recommend it. You're going to pick your phone up when you get out of bed anyway. Almost all of us do. And so if that's you, pick it up and read your Bible. Reverend Holmes. So this is this is a, a book not for the faint of heart, okay? This is mm. a thick, dense, philosophical book, uh, but it is rich and uh, very good when it comes to uh, understanding the biblical story and everything that, that is tied to it. But it's called Biblical Critical Theory. By Christopher Watkin. It is very long, and there's some philosophical parts where I'll be honest, I'm like, I'm just gonna have to skip over this because this is a little too dense for me just to Ooh, get through. Oh, that's saying something. So because you got some horsepower running up there. I don't know about that, but it it's it's but when he gets to the biblical text and the stories and weaving this together, man, it there's a lot of lot to unpackage and it's great. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna throw out I'm gonna throw out a biography. Which I hate reading biographies. Really, mm. but I, I do. Huh. I'm, I'm not a huge biography fan. Uh, but there's one that I found really interesting. I read a couple of years ago, and it, like right now, I'm in the middle of about four different books because oh, you know yeah. we're driving out of town. It's yep. like all right, I'm four, halfway through four, but I can't recommend any of them yet because I don't know how they end. Sure. So I have a bunch <laughs> for next week ready to go. Uh, but one of my favorite biographies was actually uh, called Everybody's Sister. It was a biography of uh, Amy Simple McPherson. Which, if you're not familiar with her, mm. she was the founder of the Salvation Army. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And also kind of the founder of the, one of the first mega churches on the West Coast. So she was kind of sort of the founder of the Four Square Gospel Movement, okay. which kind of went in with the Salvation oh, Army. Oh, that's where I heard her name. Yeah, yeah she was a traveling gospel. evangelist. I, like, I and, know that name somewhere. But. Yeah, and just reading through the story, number one, it's just a real, she had a, such an interesting life hmm. in hmm. terms of how she got where she was and how she was following God's call. But like, there's also a lot of drama in and a lot of like, oh, if I was a pastor, I wouldn't be doing that. Like, it's just, there's a human side to it that shows the struggle that even if you're trying to follow God, that everybody deals with at some in some way, shape, or form, but also still while God allowing her to do really big things for the kingdom. Mm. And I just think there's this beautiful image of anybody that thinks that they're too far removed from God to be used by God. There's just this beautiful way that God uses that for his glory, even in the midst of flaws and tribulation. Mm. So really good read. Cool. Sounds like it. Sounds mm. incredible. 
Well, friends, that's our podcast for today. As always, we are forever thankful for you, the church member, our family member, uh, the member of our community. If there's anything we can do to help you, or if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. We're embarrassingly easy to find. Go to sonofallgrace.org. And hey, do me a favor. Don't don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Wherever you listen to podcasts at, share this episode with a friend. Is that how you do it? it? Yep. I'm going to put it right here when I edit it. Boom. 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 All right, guys. Until next week. Go forth and make disciple makers. We'll see you real soon.